Welcome, today we're having a look at irrational numbers and trying to answer this question, what is an irrational number? So we've got a couple of things here, three properties. Our first is uh, our uh, an irrational number cannot be written in the form A over B, where A and B are both whole. So if we think of a typical proper or improper fraction, 3 over 5, 5 over 3, 1 over 4, uh, negative 17 over 33, uh, all of those are rational numbers because we can write, write those in the form of A over B, where both A, the numerator, and B, the denominator, are whole numbers. Okay, whereas um, an irrational number cannot have this happen. Um, the, the other thing about an irrational number, it's a never-ending decimal that has no pattern to it. So if you think about something like a recurring decimal, a recurring decimal like, let's take 2 over 3, for example. Now that's 0 0.66666, and that will continue on infinitely. We can put a little dot on top of the first 6 to symbolize that. On your calculator, it will go to 0 0.666667, because it rounds the last digit when it runs out of space. But that is a rational number because we have written that in the form of 2 over 3, where 2 and 3 are both whole numbers. It's also, it, it is, it's a never-ending decimal, yes, but it has, no, it has a pattern to it. By having that pattern of repeating sixes, it, it becomes a rational number, as opposed to something like pi, which is 3.1415, and so on. There are all those people out there who can remember it. 200 digits of pi or whatever. I'm not one of those people, but I can tell you that pi is an irrational number because it is a never ending decimal that has no pattern to it and it can never be written in the form of A over B, never be written as a fraction for both the top and the bottom uh, whole number. So that is an irrational number. For pi, now the closest rational approximation for pi is 22 over 7. But that is not exactly pi. If you go type 22 over 7 in your calculator, which is a rational number, um, you'll get really, really close to pi, but not exactly pi, because pi is irrational. 22 over 7 is its closest rational approximation. So three properties can't be written as a fraction where A and B, the top and bottom, are both whole numbers. It's got no pattern to it and is a never-ending decimal. The basis for this whole topic we're going to do is all about something called surds. Now, surds are something uh, where we, we are dealing with irrational numbers. One of the one of the most common irrational numbers that we deal with, we've talked about pi. Another one we talk about is e. Uh, that's only calculator as well. Uh, that's Euler's constant. Um, but we deal with things that involve square roots, okay, or a radical symbol. Now, that's that um, is the opposite of a, of a squaring of a number. Um, and that often for us produces an irrational number. Now, if I go and take the square root of two, if I put that in my calculator, I get 1.412. And what you'll notice, that is a never ending decimal uh, and it has no pattern to that. Now you could go on your calculator, that might show six, seven, eight decimal places. But if you go type that into a computer or, or a calculator with a longer screen, a more capable screen, you would find that that actually goes on infinitely. So root two is irrational, as opposed to something like the root of four, which is just two. Okay, now that's because when we go take the square root of a non-square number, okay, when we go take the square root of a non-square number, we end up with a third. That is irrational. Okay, irrational or a third. If we're taking the square root of any square number, we are going to end up with a rational answer, whereas if we take the square root of any non-square number, we are going to end up with an irrational answer. So if I, for example, take the square root of something like nine over four, and take the square root of those. They're both square numbers. So that's going to give me, well, we'll do this later on when we look at us in our thirds topic, but that's going to give me an answer of three over two, which is rational because I'm taking the square root of one square number over another square number. If I go and do uh, nine over two, 
or nine over five. Nine over three is not a good example because that will give me, well, actually it will give me um, an irrational answer, but that just simplifies down to the square root of three. But if I go take the square root of, of nine over five, I'll end up with an irrational answer because nine is square, but five is not square. So um, this, this gives us a little bit more insight into what's going to give me a rational answer, what a rational number is and what an irrational number is. The other thing about an irrational number or a third in this case uh, is that a third represents a fractional power. So if I got something like the square root of two, that is the same as me saying two to the power of one half. That is not like half of two. Okay, as we can see, half of two is just one, not 1.41 1 and so on. But if I've got something that's that's um, a third, I can write that as a fractional power or just for, for a basic square root, that's one over two. For a cube root, it's one over three. Look at that a little bit more in, in one of our next videos. But if you can see that so far that um, if we square root something that's not square, we get an irrational number, and that means it's going to have a fractional power, you're good to go. One of the things we need to be able to do is write a decimal as a fraction. Now, you might know how to do this already with something like uh, three over four. Okay, we could say that's 0 0.75, or we could go the other way there, that's fraction to a decimal. We could go and say that um, 0 0.48, well, that's the same as 48 over 100. They share, they share four as a highest common factor, so I could make that 12 over 25. Your calculator could also do both those things for you. So that's, that's no real issue. Now, when we end up with something like, uh, if I've got something like 0 0.23, where both the two and the three are recurring. So that's two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three. You can't go type 0 0.23232323 into your calculator and have it tell you what that is. Because as many two threes as you go put in, uh, you're not gonna put enough in because you need to put an infinite number of twos and threes in there, which you cannot do. So we need a, we need a formulation to how to deal with this. So our first thing we do, we look at how many numbers are recurring in our pattern. Okay, so this, um, there are two numbers recurring in our pattern here. So that, those two numbers will be the numerator of my fraction. I'll show you a more formal way to do this in a second and why this works, but those two numbers will be the numerator of my fraction. Now, the denominator of my fraction, I add however many numbers in my numerator. First, that's how many zeros I'll have. Okay, so I start with 23 over 100. But that's not quite right because that would be 0 0.23. And what I do, in fact, is from that numerator, I take away 1. So 23 over 99. Okay. Now, this works if we take it to something really simple. In fact, let's make it 0 0.3 recurring. Okay. I have one number that's recurring, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. That becomes my numerator, whatever's recurring, over... Well, I put down a one first. How many numbers are recurring that I put that many zeros? And then I take away one from that number. Three over nine. Or one over three, which is 0 0.333. If I have 0 0.579 recurring. Now the dot on either end, or it could be a bar on top of those like this. They mean exactly the same thing. I Again, my three numbers in my numerator, five, seven, nine, over, it, um, my numerator would be a thousand, one, then three zeros. I'll take away one from that over nine, nine, nine. And you can go check all those in your calculator. And I'll show you in a moment why this actually works. But a simple way to write this, our simple process becomes we write our recurring digits as the numerator, we then write our denominator, which is which is the power of 10 based on how many digits are recurring. So uh, if if I have three digits recurring, 10 to the power of three is a thousand. If I have one digit recurring, it's 10 to the power of one, which is just 10. Uh, this is a little bit different if I had something like 0 0.533333. I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, but for, for something where we've got a simple recurring pattern, all the digits are repeating, 
this will work very nicely. And then once we've got that power of 10 on the bottom, we subtract one from that because our denominator will normally just involve nines. Now it might simplify down like three over nine becomes one over three, but it will start off being something out of nine, which will give us that recurring pattern. Let's have a look as to why this works, okay? Why the, why the previous set of examples works the way that they do. Um, and I'm gonna take this decimal here, 0 0.57, and I'm gonna say the 57 is recurring. So what we could really do here is just say straight away, use that three-step process and say, all right, 57, 57 becomes the numerator. I'm gonna take, uh, I've got two digits recurring, so take 10 to the power of two is 100. Take one away from that, and that's 99. Now, if you go plug that into your calculator, I'm betting that you go get 0 0.57, 57, 57, 57, you might round to 58 uh, at some point, but you're going to get something that is, is a representation of 0 0.57 recurring. But why does this work? So start off, we're going to show you this algebraically. And this works for any example, particularly that one that I was talking about earlier, where we've got something like, if, we, if it was different here, if we had 0 point five seven and it, and it was zero point five seven 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 it's a similar process but it's not quite what i've just described here you have to do it a little bit differently so um if we start off here we'll get rid of this one for a sec I'll show you something like that in a moment start off by saying i'm going to say let x equals zero point five seven we just pick x common one we use in mathematics we could so we could say a we could say r for, for rational or i for, for irrational uh, depending on how it will always be rational in fact um, now what i want to do what i'm going to do is multiply x by um by whatever power of 10 um is the number of my recurring digits so here i've got two digits that are recurring i'm going to multiply by 10 to the power of 2 i'm going to multiply by 100 i'm going to say 100 x is zero is now fifty seven point five seven five seven five seven five seven. So what's happened here? I've got an infinite number of fives and sevens, five seven five seven five seven, uh, a trillion times over, and then some. So if I multiply that by one hundred, I shift my I shift my decimal place two to the right, so I end up with fifty seven. But I've still back here got all these five sevens that keep going on forever and a day. So what I can now do, uh, if we have a look at this, what I want to do here is get rid of this bit. This is my problem, this recurring bit. This 57 is actually quite nice to deal with here. So what we're going to do, we're going to set up a pair of simultaneous equations. We may remember this topic from last year. Now what I really need to do to get rid of that 57 that's recurring, that's our original x here. So what I'm going to do on my left hand side, over here, I'm going to say 100x minus 1x is equal to 57.57 minus 0 0.57. And on now, let's look at the let's look at the two sides here. The left is easy to deal with because I've just got 99x. 100x minus x is just 99x. And the reason I choose to do this is because I hope you see that these two things are exactly the same. Okay. Um, another way I can split it up if you'd like is I've, I've now got 57 plus 0 0.57 recurring minus 0 0.57 recurring. And again, what I want is those two things to just cancel each other out. So that's what I end up with there. If, once I've gotten rid of those, I just end up with plain old 57, which is what I'd like. To find my value of x, I need to go and say, I'm going to divide by 99, and I end up with x equals 57 over 99, which is what we started with, right? What I've just shown you there is just the formal way of doing this. It's not, um, it's not gonna give you a different answer. It's just a formal way of showing you why this works. I'm gonna give you one more example. Let's take that one that looked almost exactly the same here of 0 0.57, where just the seven is recurring. So that one is 0 0.577777. The five is not recurring, the seven is recurring. So it's gonna be very similar to our previous answer, 
a 57 over 99, but it's not going to be exactly the same. We can't treat it in the same way. But again, let's start off by saying let X, let's say let N for number um, be 0 0.57 recurring. Okay, now what I want to do this time, last time I chose to multiply by 100 because I had two digits recurring. This time what I'm going to choose to do is I'm going to multiply two different numbers in fact. So what I'm going to start off by doing is I'm just going to multiply by 10 because I've got that first digit not recurring. I need to get that one out of the way. So I'm going to say 10n is equal to 5.7 where just the seven, the seven is still what's just recurring. It's 5.77777. Now what I'm actually going to do now, I'm going to say 100N is equal to 57.7. Still have that 77777 recurring here, okay? Now, what based on our last type of problem, what I wanted to get rid of was that recurring part. I can do that again here because now I've got these guys behaving nicely for me. I've got the same thing after the decimal point in both examples. So what I'm going to do with my simultaneous equation here, I'm going to take away this line from this line here. By the way, we're getting up to the pointy end here. If this is starting to lose you, don't stress too much about this. This is really the hardest type of example we deal with, but follow along for the next 60 seconds and, and we'll be done with it. So I'm going to take away 10 in from 100 in, so I'll have 100 in minus 10 in, if you've gotten 100x minus 10x, absolutely fine, is equal to 57.7 recurring minus 5.7 recurring. So 100 minus 10 is 90n, and that's equal to, now what happens here, these recurring parts, they're gone, and I've just got 57 minus 5 is 52. And I divide by 90, and what that simplifies down to is 52 over 90 or 26 over 45. Can't take that any further, but if you do go check that in your calculator, you will end up with 0 0.577777. That last one's a little bit harder. If you're just asked to write it as a rational number, you can use the little trick I showed you first. If you're asked to show why it's a rational number, you can just go and do the, um, the easier one from the previous part of this video. And then if it's a really hard one, you might have to go and do this. Hope that helps.